Welcome to the brand new Kitsuka Digest with Hazel and Fiona, a brand new news show where twice a week Fiona and a special guest, and sometimes a surprise guest, bring you all the news you need to know. And some news you really don't need to know as well, plus a good bit of commentary you didn't ask for. Alright, let's get started. It's Monday, January 23rd, and we got a couple of good news stories for you from last week. We're going to start off with two Microsoft stories, because apparently they still make games and other stuff. Who knew? Not me, that's for sure. But we actually have two stories this week from them. First, Halo 5 is getting some more of its trademark free DLC in a new Mythic Warzone map with a winter theme. And second, Halo Wars 2 much hyped Blitz Mode is finally available for gamers to try. Blitz Mode? What's that, like football? No. It's a new take on RTS games that mixes the tried and true real time strategy genre with a collectible card game element. So it's a giant opportunity for Microsoft to charge people for tiny little digital trading card packs like Blizzard does with Hearthstone? Yes. Yes, it is. But don't judge the game for that. So far from what I've seen, it's a really fun, solid, and tight RTS with a little bit of card magic built in. All right, I'm going to take your word for this one. If you guys want to get your hands on the Halo Wars 2 beta, you'll have until January the 30th to give it a try. If you miss that window, the full game will release on February 21st. And in what I can only call an actually awesome move by 343i, Halo 5 is still getting DLC. The best will not die! But seriously, I played Halo 5 for about 5 months or so after it came out, and 343i has been amazing about dropping content to keep the player base interested. So I was pretty surprised to see a mail in my inbox this weekend that, st that started off. Welcome to the weekend. If you're looking to play Halo 5 this weekend, you can play Mythic Warzone Firefight on the winter theme map, March on Stormbreak. Always love to see a developer who is keeping up with their DLC and giving it to the players for free. Yeah, 343i is literally amazing at that. Next, somebody who's not amazing at giving away free DLC. Blizzard may have leaked their new, ch their new event for Chinese New Year just a little bit early. A leaked Chinese advertisement showed a group of four skins for Roadhog, Reinhardt, Winston, and Zenyatta. The four skins depict characters from the famous Chinese novel Odyssey to the West. Zenyatta's skin is the Buddhist monk Zhao Zhang, while the three tank heroes are dressed as the monk's three disciples. Winston is Sung Wukong, Roadhog is the pig monster Zhu Bai, and Reinhardt is Sha Wujing, a sand monster that terrorized a river. This is actually really cool. I played a lot of Overwatch, and every time one of these events comes up, I'm tempted to go back to playing just to check out the new cool skins. I really like that Overwatch isn't letting itself become just a generic FPS. Plus, like, these are all-time classic characters, so it's always awesome to see them brought to life in Overwatch's style. Now on to some less happy news. Ubisoft has finally released the PC requirements for the new Hack and Slash for Honor, and uh, they're, they're kind of a doozy. So, for minimum requirements, Ubisoft are asking for an Intel Core i3-550, an AMD Phenom 2 X4-995, and for GPUs, they're asking for a GTX 660, a GTX 750 Ti, a GTX 950, or a GTX 1050, basically any card with 2GB of VRAM or more. On the AMD side, they would like to have HD 6970, 7870, R9 270, R9 370, or the RX 460, again, any card with 2GB of VRAM or more as well as 4GB of RAM in the computer. The real surprise is that this will only get you 720p gameplay at 30fps, so if you want the full game experience, you're going to have to have a bit more oomph. No one wants to play at 30fps, and by a bit more, they say you need at least an i5 2500K, a GTX 680 or 1060, and 8GB of RAM just to get the damn thing running at 1080p. That's a hefty price to pay for some pretty Viking Samurai Knight action. Other than that, this has been a pretty good week for news, I'd say. I mean, we also got a 20-minute trailer for Ghost Recon Wildlands. Oh, I know Zenergy is hype on this one. Yeah, he's pretty, pretty hype on it. This trailer is basically just showing us the single player. Now, now, don't shit on it before you get on it. This trailer showed a lot of cool stuff. Just because you're only hype on multiplayer games doesn't mean this won't be good. Running through the jungle and infiltrating enemy camps is more than a little reminiscent of Far Cry, but the added element of squad mates opens up a wider range of gameplay possibilities. Squaddies can be rallied to secure specific locations. 
and sync shots will let you kill multiple enemies simultaneously. A good way to get places quietly. And when the shooting does start in earnest, it's always nice to have someone with a gun hanging out your car window. Okay, you sold me. That sounds pretty fun. And I do love a bit of open world mayhem. I mean, the Just Cause games are two of my, some of my favorite games of all time. Just Cause 2 is a great fucking game, seriously. But hopefully this one has that same vibe, plus some teammates to help out. Finally, we come to the one story I actually care about this week. Uh, let me guess, it's something about The Division? Yes. Are you reading my mind? No, but it's all you've been playing this week, you and Zenergy, and even Fiara. Okay, true. So basically The Division 1.6 update is just about ready to drop, and it's kinda huge. First, it's going to contain the Last Stand DLC. Next, there's going to be a huge update on the Dark Zone, and finally, there'll be contamination events. And there's also going to be major changes to name gear and a Dark Zone leaderboard. Not that I think anyone really gives a shit about a leaderboard. Uh, hopefully the gear updates help a bit, because Rob and Zen are basically topped out at this point. Yeah, they are, but RNGesus really fucking hates me. I still need a good weapon. But yeah, we're, we're getting quite a lot of new content with this update. In a statement released on the website, Ubisoft said, In Update 1.6, the gates in the northern part of the Dark Zone will open, and Dark Zone 7, 8, and 9 will finally become available. While the Dark Zone has never been the most welcoming place in New York, the situation up in Dark Zone 7 through 9 is especially dire. We don't want to spoil too much in this article, as we'd rather have you experience the new areas on your own, and there's a couple of surprises waiting for you in there. In total, these new areas, including all their vertical space, like rooftops and underground locations, almost double the playable size of the current Dark Zone. But no new world tier? Nope, sadly tier 5 is still going to be the top. These guys are really pushing the dark zone, huh? I wonder if they will ever fix all the fucking hacking and shit that made it totally unusable. It's Ubisoft, so I'm going to go with no, but at least they're adding a bit more PvE outside of the dark zone. Just tell me it's not more cleaners. I hate those damn flamethrowers. I mean, you can you can read it. And it's cleaners, fuck. Okay. Well, Ubisoft has described the new content as Contamination events will see elite cleaners appear in underground locations where masses of body bags have led to much higher than usual levels of viral lethality. The cleaners are set on burning everything in their path, which sounds like a good idea, except that it also includes any civilians they may encounter along the way. And so it's up to you to stop them. Complicating matters is that the increased concentration of virus it means that your filter isn't enough to keep you protected. So you'll have to move quickly and manage your health while you're roaming around these infested locales. So it's basically survival, but in a tiny contaminated and tiny contained area. Man, I feel bad for those people who paid for that DLC. Yeah, it's their loss. That's why I don't ever buy any DLC. Good policy. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to follow us on Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. If you want to participate with any of our content, drop us a line on Discord. The link will be in the description. And of course, if you enjoyed the show and want to see more like it, leave a comment. I read every single one.